Hello and welcome to your bootstrap tutorial part two. Last time we learned how to set up a fairly simple bootstrap document and we made two rows with a couple different columns each. We learned about the grid system and uh, we learned how powerful bootstrap is because it works for a desktop, it works for tablets, and it works for your phone all in one. Um, and that's great, that's what we like. So in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to add some more dynamic content to your Bootstrap website and uh, also learn how to add a nav bar because those are important on pretty much every website. So let's get started. Um, we're back at the getbootstrap.com page in the getting started section. And I'm looking here at the basic template. Let's take a look at the, the basic template for Bootstrap. Uh, we want to get this nav bar, so let's go ahead and inspect the, the uh, source code. Not in the body, it's in the head. Okay, so you'll notice there are two different pieces here. There's a div with a class of container and a div with a class of navbar, navbar dash inverse, navbar dash fixed dash top. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you guess which one you think the navbar is. And I bet you guess right. Congratulations, it's the top one. Um, this is a convention Bootstrap uses to separate the container of the content for your page and the navigation bar so it can keep that on the top. Um, so let's go ahead and just add that first div, the container, around our first row here, because we're going to want to keep that convention. Now, containers in Bootstrap actually do something very specific. What they do is they, they center the content in the middle of the page, and they actually give it, um, they, they give it about 20 pixels of padding on all sides. Uh, it gives it a nice kind of modern look to it, always a good idea to... Uh, have an overarching container for your content on your bootstrap page. So there's our container. Now we need another div for our navbar. Okay. Now in the sample we see it, the class is navbar, navbar dash inverse, navbar dash fix dash top, role equals navigation. That's actually for uh, accessibility settings like if you needed to speak to your computer to tell it to do something. Uh, we'll include that too. Um, but let's dig into uh, what those different classes mean, um, because that seems like a lot of classes for a simple navbar. Um, so if you go back and you go to where it says CS or components, and you click navbar, this is actually going to show you what all the different navbars mean. What all the different navbar classes do. Okay, so we're going to use a fairly default navbar. I, I'll let you read through this on your own. You you don't you don't need me to uh, to read through it for you, uh, of course. But this section here, starting with navs and going down to navbar, is really useful. Um, so we're going to go ahead and and we're just going to use the basic navbar navbar default class. All right, that's that's the most basic thing that we could use. So. Let's use uh, let's use that. So navbar navbar dash default. Great. All right. Now let's go back to the example. Oopsie. Oh. We're gonna go back to where the navbar code is. Here it is. And let's expand this div a little bit and check it out. So it's got this before and it's got this after category here. What do you what do you think that means? Okay, if you guess that it's about the collapse that happens when the nav bar gets too small, you're right. Watch what happens when we get to about 980 pixels. Not 980. Oh, there we go. It was for about 500 or so pixels. 560. So notice how we have these links on the top here, and then when you get to about 560 pixels, it collapses into this hamburger here. Okay, so that's what the before and after is talking about. It says before on our nav bar, we have this, and after we have nothing, which is kind of what you found. Okay, so let's look at uh, this before piece here. We'll start here. Um, so it says div class equals container. There's that container showing up. So we're gonna we're going to put that in. So let's go ahead and go div class equals container. 
And you'll notice there are two new divs. There's a div with a class of navbar-header. And if you put your mouse over that, you'll see in the that Google Chrome highlights the element. That's actually where like your company logo would go, or your company name, your project name. That's kind of like a standard place for it to go. Of course, it doesn't have to be there. You can add a class of pull left or pull right to um, your navbar header to move it in a different place. Um, but that's what's in there, so let's check it out. It looks like it's got a button, and it's the type of button. The class is navbar dash toggle collapsed. What this means is this button is only going to show up when it's collapsed. Okay, that's once again when we get to here, that's when the button shows up. Okay, so we can go ahead and add that functionality into our Bootstrap navbar. It's always a good idea uh, to have that collapse functionality. It's very standard on mobile devices. So let's go ahead and copy this button code fairly exactly. Um, so we need to first do div class navbar dash header. Inside that we have button type Class equals navbar dash toggle collapsed data toggle collapse data target navbar dash collapse. Great. Okay. Now, inside the button, it looks like we've got a couple of different things. Now, this icon bar, this actually comes from the icons from Bootstrap, so we're going to need to add another import in our header. We're going to need to import this stuff right here. And you might notice in your root folder that you don't actually have that because we didn't compile the uh, icons from Bootstrap originally. But that's not too bad. Um, let's go ahead and add this link, and I'll show you how to compile it later. We're going to remember to delete those. Okay, so here we are. We'll start with this span. So, span class. Are only toggle navigation span. That just shows up when nothing shows up. All right, class. We have the three bars for the hamburger button. So this three times, and then finally we need to close our button tag because we haven't done that yet. Great. Okay, so that's the button all set. We also need this link, the navbar brand. Um, that's just kind of showing, you know, again, the brand name of your company. Um, and notice that they've called it project name, but we can have a little fun with that. So let's go ahead and add that. A class equals navbar dash brand href. Now, an href on an A link, if you remember, is just where it goes when you click on it. Right now we're going to leave that as the pound sign because we're not going to have it go anywhere and we want it to just go home. Um, but you can change it later. And uh, we'll keep this as project name. Great. So that closes up our navbar header class. Now we need to show what's actually in the navbar. So to show that, we needed to add a new div with a new class. That class is nav, navbar dash nav. Okay, now this is a little confusing, and uh, I have to tell you. Oops, no, I lied. Sorry about that. I copied it wrong. Don't copy it wrong. Navbar dash collapse. Collapse. Okay, cool. So this div, this div is fine. So this is still we're still living in the navbar. Now, what we need to put inside the navbar dash collapse is the content in the actual navbar. Where do we get these links from? 
and it's actually an unordered list in Bootstrap. So we're going to add an unordered list here with a class of nav navbar nav. Now this is a little confusing. You're like, why are there so many navs? Um, and I don't blame you. It's actually something that I get confused with a lot too. Um, so let's just start again from the top because this is the last nav class we'll need to add. So the first thing we put in here is we put in that we're going to have a default style navbar on our page. In that navbar we're going to add a content container. In that content container we're going to add another div that is a header for a navbar. Next to that header, after that div is done, we're going to add a navbar that collapses. If you remove this piece that said collapse, you could probably bet that it wouldn't collapse. And you're right. Finally, in that navbar that collapses, that navbar content, we're going to have content in the style of an unordered list. Okay, so we know how to make unordered lists. We need to have a bunch of list items. And list items on a navbar just contain links. Very simple. And usually you put the first one as active, which means it's highlighted, because you're there first. Okay, so here's one list item, and inside it's an A, href, we'll leave it blank for now. Another list item, this time we don't need a class, see? And that's good for now. We have three links. Okay, so we got home, we have about, we have content. Let's go ahead and compress those. We're done with our unordered list. And that just about does it for our navbar. Okay, and if you've been coding well, you've been closing up all your tags as we've been going. So that's good. Okay, last thing we need to do, like I promised, is we need to get the icons off of Bootstrap. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that before we get started. Go back to Bootstrap. Okay, and uh, if you look here, if you download the Bootstrap source, that should get you a folder with those icons in it. Let's see if we can find it. I might be wrong. Oh, no, there it is. It's in the docs. And favicon.ico. That is what we're looking for. So let's take that and let's place it into your folder where your project is. I've kept mine in the same spot. Okay, that may not have been necessary, but it's fine. All right, let's save it, and let's check out how it looks. So if all goes according to plan, you should have a nav bar that puts the, you know, the finger ready to go when you hover over some links. Um, if you click project name, you're probably not going anywhere. The about page, you can see, changes the link to about and contact and all that stuff. Okay. And if it's going to be nice to me, look at that. It was nice to me. The collapse works as well. All right, so at this point, I'm going to pause the tutorial, and I'm going to wait for you to kind of catch up a little bit, because we've done quite a bit of coding in quite a bit of time. And then we'll add some more dynamic content to our page. You can also see here how that container is adding padding to the sides of the body. Uh, pretty standard and also cool looking. All right, so I'm going to pause, and then I'll restart and dynamic content to your page. Remember that Google chart that we did a while back? I have the code, the basic code from the tutorial that I made for you, but you can go ahead and find your code now, or anything else you want. Um, that's fine, too. Um, but we're going to put this Google chart into our Bootstrap site. 
So let's get started. I want to have it just centered right in the middle of the page with a simple heading above it. So let's do that. We're only going to need one column, so it should be a col-md-12, and it should say, you know, let's just say data visualization. Great. Okay. Now, I'm going to get rid of these ideas because remember we styled them with our overrides to be red and blue, and that's hideous. So let's just kind of get rid of them. Okay, cool. And then we have another row. Now, inside this other row, is where we're going to need to be a little tricky. If you remember, you told your Google Chart API to draw the chart into a div with an ID of chart underscore div. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another column middle 12, and we're going to give it an ID of chart underscore div. And we don't want it to say anything. Now, if you remember from our tutorial, uh, we have to make sure that we have uh, the JavaScript API for Google loaded. So let's go ahead and copy that. Whoops. OK, and then we need to add our own bit of JavaScript, and I'm going to go ahead and copy exactly what we wrote. Not going to go through what it does again, because you should already know. All right, now let's save it, and let's see what happens. All right, so here is our data visualization row above our chart with our bootstrap nav bar, all going according to plan, which is great. The only problem is it's not quite centered. That's not really what we want. Can you brainstorm a way to center the content in the middle of the page? Well, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but if you said that, why don't we use some spacer columns on each side, maybe like three sets of col md4, you might be right. You could also do it in CSS. But that's the thing with coding, there's a lot of different ways to do it, and it's up to you to figure out which one you think is the best. Right? That's the end of this tutorial. Now you should be able to add pretty much any type of content you want. You just added in a custom drawn chart, which is way above beginner level. Um, and you have the ability to make your own navbar. Um, and that's it for your bootstrap tutorial. I hope you enjoyed, and happy coding.